Um, tell me a little bit about um, how this team has come together, um, how they're gelling, and what your expectations are for the next three days. Uh, I mean, I think the team, the vibe inside the team is really, really good. Uh, mostly because with the riders that are here, we've been talking about the World Championships and the potential for selection um, almost since June now because of the way our nation standings and our points position was looking. Um, we knew we were where we were kind of pointed and headed. And then for sure in July, uh, it was looking very optimistic for us to have a team of, of up to six here in Richmond. So, you know, I've just been communicating with uh, with all the riders all season long about, uh, you know, this, about selections and how it's working and how our points position is and how many spots we might have available um, and who's a good fit for this race or that race and, and, and for this one for sure. You know, I've been talking to all the guys that are here about uh, about their, their likelihood to be here and, and the role they play in the race on Sunday. So I think, uh, you know, because we've been, been, t been talking about it for so long, uh, everything's, everything's really good. And also all the guys here have all ridden together on teams in the past. So mm -hmm. they're really familiar with each other as, uh, as teammates and, and, and friends and guys. So I think that, yeah, the vibe is, is awesome. And tell me about what the, uh, the overall results from the time trial are from compared to your expectations? Yeah, so I mean, you know, you always kind of cross your fingers for at the Worlds. I think weird things can happen at the end of the season. You know, lots of guys are going to be all over the place in terms of their, their form and what they mm -hmm. might be able to do on the day. So, I mean, I, I would have loved for the results for Ryan and Hugo to be a little bit better in terms of their actual placing. Um, but looking at uh, the actual race itself and how they rode compared to their sort of their, their, their capabilities and what they're able to do from a power perspective and how they rode yesterday, they both had like, really, really good rides, you know, so that's like I'm very satisfied from, from that perspective for sure. And, uh, and I think, you know, I know that each of them had their best performance in a time trial of that length and duration of their career. So you can't ask for anything more. They put it all out there on the day, and they had they had really, really, really good rides. So I think uh, from that perspective, we're, we're all really happy and all really satisfied. And uh, I think it's it's really interesting to see where both of them sort of, sort of sat <coughs> in the results comparative to some of the other riders in the race. Um, you know, with, with Ryan, I think he's at, uh, you know, he's at the sort of summit of his career. You know, we sort of know, like, Ryan can definitely make improvements, and we're looking forward to working with Ryan through the offseason now, particularly on his positioning and his aerodynamics, mm. because that's something that we weren't able, we were able to do with Hugo, but because of timing and scheduling and working with the riders through the season, we weren't able to get uh, Ryan in there. So I think if we get Ryan into the Milton Velodrome to do some work with him in the off season to find some improvements, it can be really beneficial to his time trial and performances. And I think Ryan's, you know, like for me, Ryan and Hugo have always been pretty similar time trialists over the last few years as I've worked with them. Um, but for sure now we're seeing some really some really exciting growth and improvements with Hugo and Hugo because of his age at only 24 you know like he's still he's still three or four years away from his best performances as a time finalist and so thinking about where thinking about how he's improved since sort of 2012 with Spider Tech to where he is now mm -hmm. in 2015 with AG2R and riding more on the world tour and looking at some of the improvements that he's had and then sort of using those a little bit as indicators of where you could be in another two, three, or four years. It's really exciting. And we've had, we did have a chance to do some work with Hugo um, with Alpha Mantis and Cycling Canada at the Milton Velodrome before coming here just uh, two weeks ago. And I think that those improvements were, were really helpful to the, to the performance he was able okay. to do uh, yesterday. And then just hearing a little bit of feedback from 
you know other riders and other teams about how things went for for their for their racers, and then looking at that and thinking about where what that could mean for Hugo in terms of where he can improve over the next couple of years is really exciting. Uh, he certainly has a lot of potential to to move up a, a number of places, and yeah. his result was quite close if you look at the time to the the riders just ahead of him. So yeah, you know, so I think like with Hugo, I think it was. I can't remember off the top of my head now because I've been looking at so many numbers, <laughs> including just schedule stuff. But I think it's just one minute outside of the top ten. Right. So you know, so and over that distance, you know, like one minute is is a big is, is big in time, but it it really sort of relates back to about one second improvement per kilometer. Um, and you know, if you think about the you know the strength of the power needed to make that kind of improvement, um, it's not just about power improvement, it could be some, some small tweaks still in his aerodynamics or his position, you know, and, and to get in that minute I think is, is, is really achievable, you know, in the near term, you know, like I think that we can find that minute uh, over, a, over a race of this duration, um, you know, I'm not going to call it easy, but uh, I think we but can do perhaps it doable. in the grand scheme of things reasonably quickly, and then, you know, really with Hugo, I think we we're, we're thinking more long term you know, and, and where he can be in, in, in two, three, or four years. But for sure, you know, like just thinking about yesterday and where he, where he, he was 25th, but really he was just one minute. And everything's so close with him then anyway, like that one minute to get him into the top 10 is something that I think we can aspire to um, in, the, in the short term, you know, possibly even next year. Well, we'll find out next year. <laughs> Let's flip over to the road team. Um, is this the first time that you've had an opportunity to have six men in the the elite squad yeah. as a team? Yeah, so I think since, you know, it was in 1996 that the UCI sort of harmonized uh, professional and amateur men into one category at the World Championships. And then, you know, since then they've done some different things in terms of the qualification process and how things work. But, Pretty sure that since definitely since 1996 we've never had six men at the Worlds, and I was talking about with it with Pierre Hutzelbo actually. He used to be, you know, the head of Cycling Canada or CCA at that time, mm -hmm. and we were just reminiscing and saying the last time that it actually did happen was in 1992 in Benidorm, Spain, when Ed Arzuin at that time ran a team called Adrian Nico and they turned professional right after the Olympics. And we did send a professional men's contingent that was six riders to the World Championships in Benidorm. So okay. that's the last time that wow. that's happened. And then like in the sort of modern, more modern era, you know, since things have been harmonized, it's never happened. So I think that in itself is an achievement that we should take note of and be proud of, you know, that the guys really rode super well this year across their different trade teams to put the country in the, in the position that it is to have six. I think it speaks to the depth of talent that we have in Canada as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think all those guys are a product of you know, teams like Symmetrix and Spider Tech. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, and now it's super exciting to see some of the new teams coming up in, in Canada, like Mark Bernstein's M1 project and, and Silbert with, uh, with Gord Fraser and Scott McFarland. Montreal, like, I'm really excited about how those teams are, are coming into the scene and, uh, and doing, and, and for sure I'm really excited about Silver, just looking at, in terms of their performances right now and how they're doing, to me it's very reminiscent of Symmetrics in, in its early stages of development, and I would even say they're a little bit ahead of that, so it's, promising. it's, it's really, really exciting to see, you know, and it's exciting to see that they have They've got that. They've str they've st struck a really good balance between some of the more mature senior guys like Ryan and Derek St. John, and the young, exciting guys you know like Ben and Alex mm -hmm. and Nigel. So I think it's uh, yeah. It's, I, I think it's that's a perfect balance for for Canada. You know to have some of our best young guys with some of our best older guys and more mature guys. So they're they're learning. It. Have a strong director like Gordon is, is so beneficial. 
and you get to reap the benefits too. Uh, the, the performances that I saw at, uh, in particular, the Quebec race, yeah, were really no, something. For sure, like, it, you know, Silver was a huge. Silver as a team was a huge con contributor to what we what we've done to get us in the position that we're in right now. You know, like they scored uh, right around 200 points. And, uh, I mean, we're right. We're just we're just around 800 points in the America Tour this year. So that was a pretty significant contribution to what we did as a nation. Right. Uh, and, uh, and then, like I said, I think it's really exciting to see where some of our young guys are, like, uh, you know, like Harry and Bosch. And I think, you know, their potential ability to sort of step into the shoes. Like, we're going to lose Mike Woods. You know, he, was a, he was a big time contributor for us mm -hmm. last year. Um, but I think, you know, like Ben, Alex, uh, Adam, they're in really, really good positions to sort of step in and start to fill some of the shoes guys that might be moving, moving on to World Tour or moving up into Division 2 and racing more in Europe, where, you know, the role in the teams they'll have will put them in potentially less likely, we might be less likely to score big points out of some of the, out of some of the guys, you know, like, like Gion and Ryan Anderson, who have also been, you know, pretty, really, really consistent points getters for the country. Mm -hmm. So I just want to wrap up with, um, you've had a preview, the team has had a preview of the, the course for the weekend. Um, what's the general response? Uh, I, think, I think, you know, looking at the course today, like everybody looked up on it, you know, on, on paper and video and whatnot leading in today, but to see it like live in the flesh today, I think it's, it's definitely harder than, uh, than we, we expected it was going to be. Um, although we, we always expected the succession of the three climbs at the end to be to be difficult and uh, you know quite, especially with position you know so maybe in some ways I would say we expected it to be more of a positioning difficulty than sort of physical difficulty but I think having looked at it today it's gonna it's gonna be both for sure um, but I definitely think the race is going to be you know, it's going to be harder than people expect, and it's going to be there's going to be a lot of just I think, sort of mental and physical tension just from having to maintain your position on the field to get through that section of the of the course every single lap, you know, right from the beginning. I don't think there's going to be there's not going to be many moments in the race where you can relax through that section. Right. And expectations of the team. I think we have to. Uh, we always have to fix it, like uh, shoot for the best performance. You know? So I definitely think, you know, as much as I say the course is difficult and it's going to be a challenge and it's going to be hard, it's also a year where I think we can aspire to uh, shoot for a, a really, a really top performance out of our guys. You know, and having six, which gives us a little bit more options mm -hmm. in the race, um, puts us in a much better position. And I think, you know, the, the capabilities of the guys that we have here, um, you know, with Antoine, Hugo, Guillaume, Anderson, um, we have really good guys for this kind of course, you know, and even Roth, you know. And so for sure, like, I think Mike, Mike Woods is, uh, is obviously a bit of a phenom, and he's awesome, so I have a lot of confidence in what Mike can do with the team and for us on, on Sunday. But for sure, I'm really excited about, you know, the guys, the other guys in the team, because they definitely have to have a decent amount of exposure and experience to kind of the Flandrian style of racing and the positioning that's required and how to get that position in the bunch and how to move through the professional bunch as you're setting up for, for, for things like that approach to the video and the sections through, through to the next, the next two hills. So those guys all know how to do it. Um, they've done it together on Spider Sex for two years and they've done it subsequent to that with their other trade teams. And so I think we're, we're in a good position and but I, for sure we can't, I don't think that we can sit back and wait and just play the end game. You know, like our approach to the race will definitely be to try to get ahead of the race a little bit and look for opportunities before, you know, the big countries come forward to really set up their final 
we want to try to give you a position some seat. guys up the road. Hopefully, if there's an opportunity to get up the road and break okay. away, we can move some guys around. And, uh, and I think that's our best chance to have more players in the final than just if we just sat in the group and sort of focused on trying to get through the setup to the end game when big teams like Italy, Spain, Netherlands, Australia, and Belgium are going at it. You know, and if we just try to play the game with them, we're gonna we're gonna lose too many guys. You know, so we gotta try to put some guys ahead of that um, and then let it come back together and then have more resources in the final. For sure. That sounds like a. a the beginnings of a well thought out strategy. <laughs> Have you had a chance to talk through it with the team yet? Uh, you know, I think we haven't we haven't had our team meeting. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had that conversations about how the race could unfold and the different scenarios with all the guys one on one in the, uh, in the days, weeks, and months leading up to the race. So okay. I think we're all we're all more or less on the same page about how it's going to unfold and what we need to do. And now it'll just be a little bit of fine-tuning some of those ideas as a group when we have our meeting on, uh, on Saturday. Right. Well, I'm wishing the guys great success. Thanks very much, Peter. Thank you.